Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for 
All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy, our privilege to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God and also take some time to pray with you. Uh, we really appreciate those of you who write to us and let us know how these programs are blessing you, enriching your life. So we request you, if you can, to take a moment, uh, just drop us an email, let us know how your life is being enriched. I also want to invite you to come to our church website, visit our church website, uh, where a lot of free resources are available for you. Uh, sermons, sermon series, our old TV programs, a lot of our free books are available that you could download, uh, make use of, share with others, uh, and grow in your faith in Jesus Christ. So we encourage you to make use of all the free resources we make available to you through our church website. Over the last few weeks, uh, we've been talking about David, just looking at his life uh, and uh, uh, seeing how God works in the life of somebody whom God himself referred to as a man after, God, after my own heart. Uh, how God works uh, through the life or in the life of somebody uh, who's made it his one passion uh, to pursue God. Because David, as he expressed himself, uh, he was a man of one desire. He said, there's one thing I desire of the Lord. One thing that I'm pursuing after, that I want to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. I want to dwell in His temple. I want to inquire of the Lord. So that was his life statement, purpose statement, if you will. That was what he was after, uh, just pursuing God. And so we are just examining his life, uh, his journey through life, uh, and just drawing insights, drawing lessons of how God works in the lives of people who are pursuing Him. And at the same time, we want to look at some... Uh, character traits of David which we can emulate, which we can adapt in our own life uh, as we journey with God. Uh, we've divided uh, his life into four stages. We talked about the formative years. Uh, we've talked about his fugitive years, approximately a 10-year period when um, David was uh, out in the wilderness wandering uh, as a homeless man from place to place. Uh, we saw the things that took place uh, during his journey through that phase or that stage of his life. We now come to the third stage of his life, which we're calling as his famous years, because this is now David entering into his life assignment, that that which he was anointed for. Uh, this really is about a 40-year period, although we would uh, break down the last few years of this 40-year period, and we will look at that as his final years. We pick up now in 2 Samuel chapter 2, when uh, after David has received news uh, of Saul's death and so on, uh, the first thing we see here, what David doing, which again is very important for us, is David inquires of God what to do next. You know, uh, David doesn't just rush off and say, guys, King Saul is dead. Samuel the prophet anointed me as the next king. Come on, I'm your king. He doesn't even do that. His, his response after he moans for Saul and Jonathan, the other um, uh, men who fell in war, uh, David inquires of the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, he says, God, where should I go up? And we remember David has been wandering place to place. So now he's asking God, God, where should I go? And uh, should I go even into one of the cities of Judah? And God directs him to go uh, into Hebron. And so David moves there. He re relocates from the wilderness. He re relocates the city of Hebron. And uh, this is such a very uh, important move, a strategic move, because the moment he comes into Hebron, the entire tribe of Judah come to David and say, David, you are now king of Judah. Now, David is recognized king of Judah. Uh, he was 30 years of age. Uh, and, and, and you see that how all of this was brought about. David inquiring of God, uh, repositioning himself, and then that opens up for the people to come and recognize him as king. You don't find David pushing himself into the forefront. The people recognize him as king. All he was doing was listening to God and positioning himself. Very important truth, very important insight. In our journey with God, 
Our responsibility is to listen to God, position ourselves. God will orchestrate everything else that is needed for our lives. Uh, the same thing happens, uh, you know, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, as David is faithful as king of Judah, uh, uh, it, it, there is a, a, a series of battles that take place between uh, David and the house of Saul, those who were still faithful to Saul, eventually Abner, the commander-in-chief of Saul's army, is killed. Uh, David honors Abner for him being a, a mighty warrior. Uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, we find that all of Israel now come and they anoint David as king over all of Israel. So David reigned seven years, six months over Judah, 33 years over all of Israel, totaling about 40 years. So all of Israel come and recognize David as king. And so these are his years uh, of being king over all Israel, uh, possibly the greatest king Israel has ever known. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 10 and 12 says that David went out and he became great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. So these are you know, the great, greatest years of David. Uh, he was winning battles, he had extended territory, consolidated his uh, place as king, as ruler, uh, and the people were completely in support, and they, in, they were just, uh, they enjoyed David as king. Uh, what we see continuing on in, in David's uh, reign as king uh, is that even as king, he did the same thing that he was doing before. He continued to inquire of the Lord. We have a great account there in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 17 to 25, when uh, in two battles against the Philistines, both times, uh, David inquires of God, God, should I go up and fight them? And God says, go up. Uh, David inquires of God, and God says, God, should I go up and fight them? And God says, okay, now I want you to do this. I want you to go position yourself in the valley. And that's where the battle will take place. So uh, David inquires of God. He, he moves as God instructs him in battle. And uh, uh, each time he sees victory. So we are seeing here David as a man after God's own heart, as a man uh, whose one passion is to seek after God, applying that practically uh, in his everyday life. And this started, as we mentioned in the previous uh, program, it started early on in his life that he began this thing of asking God what to do, asking God for guidance. Uh, and as for us as people who want to pursue God, who want to uh, be people of one desire, this is something we must do ourselves, saying, God, what are you saying to me about this decision? God, what are you saying to me? Where should I be? Where should I position myself? What should I do? And that as we hear from God, then we move and we will see great success. And this was an important trait in David's life. As we progress in David's life, one of the things he does, I would say, one of the first things he does, of course, after those battles uh, with the Philistines and, and consolidating his position, one of the first thing he does is to set up what is known as the Tabernacle of David. He causes uh, or he uh, uh, brings the uh, Ark of the Covenant, which is a symbol of God's presence. He brings it into the city of Jerusalem and he has a tabernacle constructed like the tabernacle of Moses. He has a tabernacle constructed in Jerusalem uh, that would house uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant and he reinstitutes or he brings into place, uh, puts into place 24-7 uh, prayer and worship going on in this tabernacle. Now, this is a very significant thing that David does as king because from the time he puts this in place for 33 years approximately, that is from the time he became king over all Israel, he put this in place for about 33 years, nonstop in Israel, in Jerusalem, the city of David, in this tabernacle, there was continuous prayer and worship ascending to God in the tabernacle of David. Now, David uh, backed this up with his kingdom because uh, he had close to 10,000, a little short of 10,000 people working in this tabernacle. There were uh, 200 and uh, some uh, worship leaders. There were about 4,000 singers and musicians. And then there were 4,000 attendants, people who took care of the tabernacle, who served in this place. That is, you know, bringing that total close to uh, uh, about eight, 9,000 people who served in this tabernacle so that prayer and worship could be made to God without ceasing. So this is, is an expression 
of David being a true worshiper. And we see this also in 2 Samuel chapter 6 as they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David. Uh, and this again is a very familiar incident in David's life. How he danced before the Ark of the Covenant, actually danced before God with all his might. Uh, uh, he was celebrating the presence of God. He was celebrating the fact that, you know, uh, uh, this Ark is now being brought back to the where it belongs. He was celebrating God. Of course, his wife questioned him about it, uh, and, and she, you know, she despised him about it. But David's response in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 21-22, is outstanding. He says to Michal, his wife, he says, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me as a ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord, and I will be even more undignified than this, and will, humble, and will be humble in my own sight in doing so. You know, so you see David's heart here. He was such a worshiper of God that he was unashamed to be undignified before all his people in an in, in, in exuberant worship and praise of God. He said, I will play before the Lord. I will dance before the Lord because I'm doing this for the Lord because he has lifted me up and he has made me king. And so David was a, a, a true worshiper of God. Not only a personal did he worship God, but he instituted worship throughout the land by establishing the tabernacle of David so that all of Israel could come and worship God. You see uh, uh, this heart of David as a worshiper. Now, this was so important because uh, 300 years later, you know, once David died, of course, all of this uh, uh, came to an end. The, uh, uh, this, the kings who followed David could not or did not continue this uh, tabernacle worship. But 300 years later, after David, Amos the prophet, he prophesies in Amos uh, chapter 9, verses 11 to 13. And he, and, and he says, God speaking says, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the children of Edom, meaning the Gentiles, will come seeking after God. And there will be such a great harvest of souls. Uh, that is what Amos prophesied. Uh, Amos, uh, Amos is expressing the heart of God. God says, I want that tabernacle back. I want that 24-7 worship, prayer. Ascending before me, I want it back. I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. Very interesting. In Acts the 15th chapter, the 15th verse, 15, 16, 17 verses, James, who's the leader of the church in Jerusalem, he stands up and he says, you know what God is doing in the New Testament church is a fulfillment of Amos' prophecy. God is rebuilding the tabernacle of David. So the New Testament church is, is really called to be like the tabernacle of David, a place where there's 24-7 prayer and worship ascending to God. God loved it so much. And the New Testament church is and in, in one sense, a spiritual fulfillment of that. Uh, other important things that we see in David's life and in his famous years is that David was a strong king and administrator. We see that in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verses 15 through 18. Uh, he establishes a sound, solid administration throughout his kingdom. It says in verse 15, David reigned over all Israel, and David administered judgment and justice to all his people. And it continues in the remaining verses. He had... Uh, you know, the commander-in-chief of the army, he had other people in different positions, and so on. We also see David as king, extending kindness to the house of Saul. Uh, he, bring, uh, he brings in Saul's grandson. He asks, is there anybody from the house of Saul? And they say, there is Mephibosheth, who is the son of Jonathan, who was King Saul's son. Uh, so here is Mephibosheth, uh, the grandson of King Saul. Uh, he's actually lame in both his legs. Uh, but David brings him in, he honors him, he takes care of him, uh, just showing kindness to the house of Saul. Even though Saul was somebody who wanted to kill David. But David had made a promise that he would take care of Saul's descendants. And he fulfills that promise and he shows kindness uh, to the house of Saul. So we see once again the heart of this man who pursued God. That he had no sense of vengeance, uh, no sense of revenge towards Saul or any of his descendants. But his heart was a heart of kindness. The honor that he had for King Saul, which he demonstrated during his fugitive years, continued. That did not change now that he was king. He still honored the one whom God had once anointed as king over all Israel. You know, when we be people, when we become people after God's own heart, when we become people of one desire, pursuing God as our one passion, then his heart becomes formed in us. We begin to express the very heart of God. And this, this is a heart that honors 
what God has done. It's a heart of true worship. It's a heart that glorifies God in all things. Now, uh, in David's famous years, we see, you know, uh, Israel being established as a nation, Israel being brought back into worship of God, uh, Israel experiencing a blessing like never before. Unfortunately, uh, towards the end of these, what we call as a famous years of David, uh, David has a lapse. And uh, we know that story, how he sinned with Bathsheba and how he had uh, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite, murdered. Um, and, and this is a lapse in David's character. There's a lapse in David's judgment and in his actions. And um, David, uh, God sends Nathan the prophet to uh, rebuke David, to correct David in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. Uh, the wonderful thing about David is this, that he accepts responsibility for his actions, that he accepts that what he has done is wrong. And that's, how, that's why we see Psalm 51 written. Psalm 51 is a psalm of David that he writes after this incident where he expresses his heart of repentance to God. And he says, God against you and you only, I have sinned. I acknowledge my transgressions before you. My sin is always before you, O God. And he says, God, uh, you want truth in the inward parts. You wash me and I will be clean. You cleanse me and I, my hands will be clean. And he says, O God, um, do not hide your face from me. Blot out my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Uh, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So we see the heart of David. It's a humble heart. A heart that's willing to take a responsibility for his wrongdoing, a heart of repentance, and a heart that still longs for the presence of God. Because there's one prayer, there's prayer there is, God, don't take your presence from me. God, I don't want your Holy Spirit to go away from me. That's his prayer, because he's truly a man after God's own heart. He's truly a man whose one passion is God's presence. So here's amazing lessons to learn from the life of David, that even when we fall, even when we make mistakes, look, it's not the end of everything. God restores us. God will rebuild us. So long as we keep our passion and pursuit after God himself, he will restore us, get us back in place. When people can't find the words to express how they feel, they often turn to poetry because it creates an image in the mind of the reader that completely expresses how they really feel. This is what happened to us when we were writing the Psalms. There were times when we had to pause because we were so overwhelmed by the truth in scripture. And as we were writing these songs, we felt this truth so strongly. And I think it's a great reminder for us as Christians to take every bit of our life, to not hold back when we talk to him, to be fully vulnerable, to tell him about everything that happens, every circumstance, every doubt, every, every bit of fear, worry, shame, and all the good stuff as well. And that's what we've tried to do through these songs, to present us as our true, complete selves back to God in worship. And we're hoping that these songs will help everybody go back to God just for who they are and how He accepts them. We trust that this episode, just examining David's life, his famous years, are brought insights to you that will encourage you to really pursue God, uh, to seek Him, to be a person of the God's own heart, and to be a person of one desire, keeping God as a center of your focus and wanting more and more of Him in your life. As you journey through life, remember these lessons from the life of David, how he constantly inquired of God, he moved as upon God's instruction and he saw great success. Remember, David was a true worshiper. He gave God glory for all that God had done in his life. David's heart of kindness, even towards people who once hurt him. Uh, David's heart of, of repentance, of just acknowledging that God, uh, God has to be honored. God has to be revered in his life. If we maintain this heart, we will be a people after God's own heart, people of one desire. Let's close in prayer. Father, we ask that you will build these same things into us, these 
wonderful traits that we see in David's life. And I pray that you will help us be people after your own heart, people of one desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications, The Father's Love, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are available for free. These resources are ideal for personal study, for use in small groups, churches, and ministries. You can download them at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org.